Hello everyone, and welcome back to another video. I want to start by talking about rock climbing. Not too far in the past, rock climbing was more of a niche thing, but recently it's gained quite the popularity. I myself have picked up rock climbing about two years ago. And what I quickly came to realize was the controversy of climbing chalk. You have one side that hates chalk. They don't use it. They never want to use it. They think it's useless, a waste of money. And then you have the other side who swears by a brand or spends tons of money on these specialized chalks that claim to have extra grip properties. So who is right? Do you have to spend absurd amounts of money on chalk or does it not really matter? Or does chalk even matter at all? That's what we're gonna find out today. So I wanna start by going over my three main points of... The first thing is the huge price differences in different brands of chalk. Why pay $3 for 100 grams of chalk when a different brand makes you pay $15 for 100 grams? Is there actually a difference? The second motivation is to disprove this old paper from 2001. Now I think most people who have heard about this already have kind of swept it under the table because it claims that chalk has the opposite effect of what a majority of people think. It also has some other kind of ludicrous claims, but we won't go over those. Now my third and final motivation is to give a video that doesn't suffer from as much bias as every other chalk testing video does that is currently out there. So with these three primary motivations stated, we now naturally are gonna ask ourselves, To put it plain and simply, climbing chalk is magnesium carbonate. Chalk is not very complicated in how it works. It just absorbs the water and oils that come off of your skin. And it can do this because it forms a hydrate, which means that it ingrains the water in its structure. So magnesium carbonate by itself is pretty good, but one thing that companies do to make it better is by adding a little bit of silica to it. Now silica may improve the properties of a chalk that it's added into, but it comes with the risk that it could give silicosis or lung cancer. Now most companies will go, oh, it's not silica, it's silica silylate. It's pretty much the same thing, it's just slightly different, but in general, you don't wanna be breathing in silica compounds into your lungs. And all the studies that they refer to when they say it's not that dangerous, are referring to topical application. They are not referring to the long-term health effects of constantly inhaling functionalized glass. But I digress, let's move on to the so this experiment is going to test four different chalks, and I chose the most popular brands because those are the ones that most people can refer to. We're gonna be testing Magdust, Friction Labs, Metolius, and a special synthesized one that I spent an absurdly long time R&Ding at home that I call Grippy No Slippy, name pending. On the other side, I'm not gonna be testing Liquid Chalk, Upsalite Chalk, which is from Black Diamond, or the Silica Silylate. This is because it's very expensive stuff and I did not have the time or resources to, you know, test them. So how are we gonna test the chalk in a better, more rigorous way than what's currently already out there? The way that I approached this was to take the two most basic factors for how good chalk is, the pressure you apply and how much force you can pull on that with. My first attempt at solving the problem was this thing. This monstrosity provided a constant force by pushing your pointer finger and your thumb with two spring-loaded pistons on either side. They would be pushed onto a force sensor which would sense the exact force, and on the other side there's a bucket where you'd put metal BBs, which would be the weight applied. So that device was terrible. It did not work. It bent and bowed at the part where you pinch, and the results it gave were so inconsistent. So, to remedy that, I spent a little more time and money figuring out how to make a very good device, and I made this thing. Now this device works on the same principle. It measures a force when you pull up on it, and it measures the pinch strength with this. With this new device, I was actually getting very consistent results, and because of that, I was able to go forward and... So with this new simple device, testing was pretty straightforward. Just kidding, it wasn't. Even though the testing wasn't too complicated, it was annoying because you had to read the numbers visibly and write down every single one. Not only did you have to log every single number manually, you also had to clean the holds between each test. The way that we cleaned the holds was washing it with water, then washing it with vinegar, then washing it with water, and then washing it with alcohol. This led to the nice consistent results, but the problem was we had to do it 192 times. So after causing a micro deforestation through the paper towel industry, 
we have our results. So now that I have all this data, I really want it to be properly analyzed. So I don't have an extensive background in statistics or data analysis using statistics. I tried really, really hard to figure it out myself, but I just couldn't figure it out. And it was because of this that I volunteered a friend to help me out. So he did this out of passion for climbing and the kindness of his own heart. So please go give him some love in the description below. I linked his GitHub down there. This is the same GitHub that has the report of this full project with all the data analysis, the data itself, and the real conclusions. We've now arrived at the question of the hour. So what are the- The performance curves for all of the chalks concisely and very nicely put onto one graph was made by my statistician friend. Here it is very obvious to see that the performance of using chalk is significantly better than the performance of not using chalk. This already shoots down the old paper from 2001. However, if you look at the graph, you'll notice that the confidence intervals overlap between all of the chalks, and because of that, you can't really determine which chalk is better than the other. So really what it comes down to in the end is that the only thing that this study really shows us is that chalk is significantly better than no chalk. However, this study does lack one thing, the human element. Because of this, I decided to do some blind testing. Volunteer one is Ryan. Ryan loves his liquid chalk a little too much. As a baseline chalk, he's gonna use the liquid chalk provided by the gym. Uh, a little slippery. It's what I'm used to though. It's what we usually use at this gym. He's now gonna blind test the two chalks that I have in my hand, which was Friction Labs and Grippy No Slippy. It's good chalk, nice and sticky. On to the next chalk. It's good chalk, not quite as sticky as the first one, but it's good. So that's one in favor for Friction Labs. Volunteer number two is Sam. He's an up and coming V0 climber. He's gonna start with chalk number one and also compare both of the chalks against the gym provided liquid chalk. So the control chalk was definitely a lot worse than chalk number one. So on to chalk number two. I'm not a climber, but there was a massive difference between chalk number one and chalk number two. Chalk number two spreads so much easier and it's actually gives me much better grip on the holds. Two for two. Okay, so now I'm out of friends, so that will conclude the blind testing. So Friction Labs was the clear winner here over not grippy, very slippy. He also noted that Friction Labs felt almost twice as good as the liquid chalk when grippy no slippy felt around 10% better. So now that we have our scientific and human elements, we can combine them and get our final Now this is a preliminary test, so take everything I say with a grain of chalk. So in the end, what did we really find? Well, we know that a lot more data is needed to determine the actual differences between the individual chalks, so we can conclude that the differences between the chalks based off their pure friction is not that different. However, that's a very different story for how they actually feel and work on the wall. It's unfortunate that I couldn't test with Metolius or Magdust with the blind test as well, but I just didn't have them available to me at the time. But what I definitely can say is you should really go out there and buy chalk, especially if you're one of those people that claims that it does nothing, because that is objectively not true. Now I want to point out that this experiment was not perfect. You're at least controlling the blocks, right? It definitely could have been designed better, and in the future, 
if me or anyone else decides to take this further, I'm sure it will be designed better. Well, thanks for watching. See ya.